So let's take a look at this new wireless plug and play that just came out this year. This is the Atari Flashback Blast Volume 1 from At Games. So this is the controller with a with the sticker on it that came with the console. I put these on just so I can tell which is which. D-pad itself feels pretty good and responds good too. Same with the buttons. Though there is a slight bit of input lag, but it's not very noticeable. Got the start menu rewind button. A is the action button, but and these are just the other switches. And it's modeled after the Sega Genesis 3 button controller, and it's pretty comfortable, but it has six buttons. Whatever. This controller runs on two AA batteries. I put a sticker on the back, too. So here is the dongle. That's what it's called. Here it says blast, and this pops off, and this part plugs into your TV. And on the back here, it shows the At Games logo, which is pretty cool. And here is where the uh, micro USB cable would go to power this thing. That's right. This doesn't run on batteries like other plug and plays. It runs on a micro USB cable. Now, the included micro USB cable is pretty short, so, and my television doesn't have any USB input, so I don't use this ever. I use the NES Classic Edition's AC adapter instead. And here's the user's manual, which is oversized. Explore more of the classic world. Atari Flashback, uh, Activision Flashback Blast. Whoops, whoopsie doodles. <laughs> Activision Flashback Blast, Atari Flashback Blast version one. Atari Flashback Blast version two. Atari Flashback Blast version three. Legend Flashback Blast and the worst out of all of them, the Bandai Namco Flashback Blast. I only have these two. And here's the At Games logo. And on the back, it shows how to... <laughs> do the things, how to pair the controller or, and hook it up. And yep, that's that. So let's plug this thing in and see if it holds up well. The Atari Flashback Blast Volume 1 was made by At Games here in 2018. It contains 20 games. The first game, which is actually the main game here, is Centipede. This game has a lot of bugs, literally. In this game, you have to shoot a centipede and a bunch of other insects. The original arcade version of this game used a trackball, but this for, for when it was released for the Atari 2600, it was transferred to use the joystick, which, which still works pretty well, actually. And here's the menu interface, the menu screen. Push from menu, goes back, a saves, B loads, C quits. And there's also a rewind button, which rewinds the game. So you can go back to where you left off, which is pretty innovative. Takes a while to get back, but then. The second game is 3D Tic Tac Toe, which is basically a. a multi-layer version of the classic tic-tac-toe. Personally, I'm not a huge fan of this. The third game is Air Sea Battle. In this game, you have to... Whoops. <laughs> shoot a bunch of targets. planes, but it's kind of hard to do. I'm not very good at this game. It's 
this is sort of a meh game for me. The fourth game is bowling. In this game, you have to knock down all the pins. This is actually probably my first time playing this, and it's pretty fun. I mean, it's not as fun as Yours Revenge, but meh. The fifth game is Desert Falcon. It's very similar to Zaxxon. Down goes up, up goes down, which is kind of a confusing control scheme. It's kind of a meh game for me, but... I don't know much how to play this game. Meh. The sixth game is Dodging. In this game, we have to collect all the dashes. It's kind of like... Rally X, but with a more confusing control scheme. When I played this for the first time, I was so confused what to do. I, it's sort of a meh game for me. Most of the games on this are meh. The seventh game is the unreleased, I think, Fatal Run. basically a racing game, which is actually pretty fun. Okay, hang on. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. The tenth game is Millipede. I'm not going to do all the games on this, on this console because that would take too much time. It's basically the same as Millipede, Centipede. You shoot the little Millipede, but there's a, a little, but there's some bombs which help. It's more or less the same as Centipede, but it's still pretty fun. <laughs> I'm not gonna... I'm no longer gonna keep track of the numbering, so... So, this game is Yars Return, the sequel to Yars Revenge. So, gameplay is basically the same as Yars Revenge. You shoot the shield that's protecting the co-tile, and you have to fight the shield of the co-tile, or touch the co-tile, to win. It's fun, and it's almost as good as Yours Revenge, which is the next game. Actually, the last game. Graphically speaking, the games have a little filter, but the picture quality is better than on the original. Sound and music wise, it's a little off, but it's okay. Family friendly wise, the packaging for some reason recommends this for ages 15 and up, which is dumb because there's nothing inappropriate about this console. Also, there is a bit of screen tearing, but it's not very noticeable. So what do I think of this thing? Well, it's kind of somewhat disappointing. I mean, sure, they 
they execute pretty good. Like there were only uh, five games that I was interested in. Centipede, Fatal Run, Millipede, Yards Return, and Yards Revenge. But they still do pretty good. So, where am I gonna rank it? This is one of those middle-of-the-road plug-and-plays. I do like the Namco Arcade Classics Pac-Man version by Jack Specific more, but I will put it over the Frogger plug-and-play from MSI. So out of all the 10 plug-and-plays that I've ranked, the Atari Flashback Blast Volume 1 by At Games is going into the number 6 position. I recommend getting an Atari Flashback 9 instead. But that's just my opinion. What do you think? Let me know in the comments below. Also, be sure to like and subscribe. Or don't. I don't, I don't really care. I mean, I am kind of obscure, but... Nah. Anyways, thanks for watching. And again... I recommend the Atari Flashback 9 over this.